what can we do to help you? Maybe not give you a number, but you know, that's kind of what Jimmy Carter is about. Carter, in 1979, has by far the worst year of a president ever in the history of the United States. The only worst year had to have been 1929 with Herbert Hoover. That had to have been the worst. But this is bad. 1979, we have, let's start out in the summer. Let's not even talk about this stuff yet. In the summer, you have continuing oil issues, gas lines. Okay, now I'm talking like you in your car waiting for like 20 minutes to get gas, if it's even there, okay? Gas stations might not have gas. You're sitting there in your big, you know, like Oldsmobile, like my parents used to have, which gets like eight miles to the gallon. You know, it's like a big hoopty, you know what I mean? Like it's a boat. It's the kind of car that like, the lowrider culture makes hydraulics and stuff and switches and stuff like that. We used to have one of those. People thought I was cool. Anyways, not good gas mileage. People are, you know, it, it, 79 starts out in, in a bad way. By November, you in, in, event, start to have events around the world which start to show us that the world is not safe and it feels like the world is kind of falling apart. In November of 1979, in Iran, you have a revolution. The revolution is basically like this. You have radical, fundamentalist, Shiite Muslims overthrowing the American-backed government there and basically them taking a number of American hostages, okay? The hostages are such a big deal. Carter actually um, tries to get a military uh, invasion. I'm not going to say invasion because it's not really an invasion, but kind of a strike force to go in and rescue the, the hostages. It fails. All of the the... Like all the ships basically, not ships, but the helicopters, they, they are destroyed in the raid. They are not, he is not able to retrieve the hostages. I'm sorry, go ahead. I've not seen that movie, but is that kind of about? Well, it... it I, that would be true, except for the fact that Carter wasn't able to get the hostages out. Sorry. <laughs> but that's, yeah. And so if you're the president and you can't get hostages out of a third world country, what the heck are you doing as commander in chief? And so his popularity starts to go down as a result. And the hostages won't be given back until the next election. There, there are hostages for over 400 days, okay? These are people, these are journalists, these are politicians, these are, you know, people that work in Iran that are American citizens. December, Afghanistan. The Soviets invade neighboring Afghanistan, and the United States stands by and pretty much does nothing about it. Can't do anything about it. The Soviets are invading Afghanistan because it's a neighboring state that they want to control. There's a communist revolution, uh, there's a communist government and a, a revolution of freedom fighters. Now, one thing that's secret that most Americans don't know about at this time is a secret deal to send weapons and training over to Afghanistan to train a gentleman we now know as Osama bin Laden. Yes, the same one. There's only one. Osama bin Laden <laughs> in the ways of warfare and basically to train an anti-communist force. They're called the soldiers of God. Okay? Also known as the Mujahid. You don't have to know that. But basically, America supports them 
They fight the Soviets tooth and nail for about 10 years. They beat the Soviets. They kick the Soviet Union out of Afghanistan. One of the consequences of this, the Soviet, as the Soviet Union invades Afghanistan, the United States responds by boycotting the 1980 Summer Olympics taking place in Moscow, so there's no Olympics. And the 1980 Winter Olympics held in the United States has one of the greatest sports moments in the Cold War as a result, where the Americans fight, not fight, but hockey is basically fighting, with skates. It's how Canadians settle differences. In America, we do different things. No, but um, the Russians play the Americans in a, a, not a gold medal match, a bronze medal match, but it's like one of the most famous like sports events of all time. <laughs> it's kind of funny, out in the crowd, it says stuff like, Soviets, get the puck out of Afghanistan, you know, stuff like that. Oh, oh. can I say that in forum all or not? I just did. I don't care, though. So Carter starts to, it's just like, we are like, wow, these are like double hits one month away from each other. And the 1980 election is approaching. And Carter's popularity is totally falling. And, and not only that, you have some other trends that we got to talk about that are kind of a perfect storm to destroying Jimmy Carter's presidency. One of them is this, called the Sun Belt and the rise of the new American right. Remember how we talked about in politics there's left and right? Left is good, right is bad. No, just kidding. Left is Democrats, right is conservative Republicans. So left is liberal, right is conservative Republicans. Okay, let me say that again. Left is liberal, right is conservative. And what's starting to happen in the 70s and even in the 90s is that there's a, there's a change in population that's starting to happen in the United States. For example, the, the purple states right here see a growth in population of 50% or more, okay? So places like Texas, Florida, and so on, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, People have already moved into some of the other states, and now they're starting to move into these states. Um, the green states like California, New Mexico, and Colorado, and the eastern seaboard south states are starting to see a, about a 50 or 30 to 49 percent gain in population. So basically what we're starting to see is throughout the south and the west, the population is starting to move into those areas and they're moving out of these areas okay now what's the consequences of that this is called the Sun Belt these people are mainly white okay they're mainly evangelical Christians so they believe in the Bible and all the tenets of faith of the Bible they have a conservative view of Christianity, which is not consistent with, you know, gay marriage. That's a no-no. No, no, no. Absolutely no. Abortion? No. Civil rights? Not really. There's kind there's it it's kind of a I call it the soccer moms that live like out in the suburbs, you know, carting the kids around, doing those type, types of things, scared of everything, maybe not everything, but kind of worried about the future, about where America is going. These are people that are, have what, what are called traditional family values, okay? People like my cousins, okay? Actually, not my cousins, my wife's cousins. Very conservative mindset. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm coming out of the closet here. I don't know what Don't hate me. I love you guys. That's why I'm you know, I accept everyone. You know what I'm saying? 
You guys probably knew that anyway. Maybe it was whatever. So it, I use the example of, of people like my family, my wife's family, I should say, because my family's kind of on the liberal tip. But, you know, think about the, the San Joaquin Valley, and it's overwhelmingly conservative, isn't it, politically? It's overwhelmingly Republican. And what are Republicans in the central San Joaquin Valley mainly believe? They're very conservative. They have traditional views on marriage and the family. And um, generally, that's kind of the, the type of people they are, which is fine. Um, but that's, that's kind of what's going on here. And more and more people are flocking to these states and more of them think in a similar fashion, okay? And it's a huge political shift. When you start to have people that believe in those sorts of values, it's gonna change the politics of America. As you can see, this is where the growth is. Forevermore, the South is basically gonna be conservative and Republican. California, not so much, although we are getting a heavy dose of those, those kinds of folks. Um, these states primarily, again, those types of folks as well. So this is, this is huge because that, there, there's kind of a political movement to try to cater to that group of people, okay? And in the 70s, look at what you've had. In 1972, you've got Roe versus Wade that legalizes abortion, okay? In the 60s, you've had the civil rights movement that's been going on, that's been giving um, rights and awareness of civil liberties and rights to all kinds of different groups. In the 1960s, um, it, it got the free speech movement. It feels like, in a lot of ways, America is kind of like an earthquake, you know? It's like the conservatives are over here, they want to move over here, they want to be away from all the craziness of the 60s. You know what I mean? And so that's what's really starting to happen. And that's what you call suburban, and that's another thing that I'm talking about, is suburban conservatism. It's, it's just like people moving out of the inner cities, out into the big, nice homes, away from all the chaos of the inner cities, away from all of the civil rights movements and so on. And again, this is just what's happening. And the Republicans are going to find their support in voters such as that, and especially with the rise of evangelical Christianity. One of the things that happens um, in the early, seven, or early 70s, again, Roe versus Wade, abortion. 1969, you've got the Stonewall riots. Gay rights becomes an issue. In the late 70s, there's actually a march on Washington, or not a march on Washington, but a, a prayer march on Washington, where certain leaders of conservative southern churches meet together and they pray for our nation to be taken back. You know what I mean? Like to take, take it back to what they believe God wants it to be. And to pray for our nation, to heal our nation. But in their conception of what they want our nation to be. Okay? So there's a difference between praying for healing in our nation, but also praying against the sins of abortion, praying against the sins of homosexuals. You know? Like that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not demonizing Christians, I, I am one, okay? Don't get the wrong idea. I'm just saying that there's a certain group, at least at this point, that feels that the only way they're going to save America is to get politically active, okay, to initiate stuff like prayer in schools, to initiate and make sure that we're all saying under God in the pledge. If, if we have to get rid of evolution, in, in textbooks, like the more conservative members of this movement would say that we have to do that. Very, um, trying to take America back. 